Alleluia. Jesus lives. He's won. The crown of life is now yours. What a blessing that is as we start another morning as living sacrifices for Jesus. It is another wonderful morning on this Tuesday morning. It's April 26th, and I'm Vicar Recker speaking to you from St. John's Lutheran Church in beautiful Barry Mills. Let's now begin our time this morning by turning to the Lord in prayer. And let's do that by using Martin Luther's morning prayer. We pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Are you happy? If I were to do a survey asking that little simple question to random people in this country, what do you think that they would say? I did just that. I looked at a quick Google search a few moments ago, curious to see what the percentage of people in this country are happy. Did you know the results didn't really surprise me? In the year 2018, for example, 31% of people said that they would describe their lives as very happy. A decent percentage. But then, that same survey was taken again in the year 2020. Do you know that the percentage of people described themselves as happy in just year, two years? Do you know what happened? It decreased by 14%. A 14% decrease in just two years. Quite a drop off, isn't it? Why do you think people are unhappy. It could be for all sorts of things. The economy, the tense scene of our world policies, of course, the uncertainty of our health. All these things played a factor in how people are feeling about their overall happiness in life. But do you want to know what really played a factor in the overall unhappiness of people in this survey that I looked at? You see, many of the adults who took this survey were unhappy because of the future. The future that they are sensing. They are sensing a world that's not improving. That the quality of life is instead decreasing. They're nervous. They're nervous for the future of this country. They're nervous for the future of their children. That is what is making them unhappy. You know, we live in interesting times. Times that seem all so dire and far from being anything but good. But then we are reminded from the Apostle Paul. From the Apostle Paul in his letter to the people in Thessalonica. A living imperative. A living imperative that we had discussed 
last week. Rejoice always. Rejoice always? Boy, how can I possibly rejoice at every moment of my life? It's, it's hard enough to try to make myself smile these days with all of these awful things going on around me. But you see, the answer is actually quite simple. You see, we just focused our attention this past Sunday on an event. A moment that changed many lives forever. It was when the Lord himself made himself known to his disciples. The resurrected Lord. Listen to what happened to the disciples' attitudes when Jesus appeared. We read from John 20, verse 19. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked in for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Did you notice the attitude change when Jesus appeared? Pure joy. Rejoicing. A few moments before that, they were afraid. They were afraid and worried for their future. They were hopeless. But then everything changed. Jesus changed it. You see, Jesus reminded them of the peace that was now theirs. An opportunity to turn their attitude of unhappiness to pure rejoicing. You see, that's what Jesus' resurrection gives to us. Why would there not be? What more do we have to fear? Death and Satan and sin have been defeated. That's why the Apostle Paul gives us that imperative. A living imperative. Because Jesus lives. Because Jesus gives us this living imperative. He knows that we too will live. That although this life is only temporary, it means a future of hope and joy that knows no end. A living joy. That although we will die someday, that death is only a blip compared to the eternity that awaits us. So rejoice. Your Jesus lives. Let's pray. Most gracious and merciful Father, we rejoice, not just this day, but every day, that you have gave, given us Jesus. You have given us Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, the one that we can turn to, the one that we can see with our own eyes and rejoice. Rejoice that all of our sin has been taken away, that you have defeated death, that you have given us a home in heaven, a home in heaven that we can look forward to, that we don't have to worry about the future, that we can live each day rejoicing in your promise of forgiveness. Always let us be remindful of that today and always. In Jesus' name, Amen. Once again, we thank you for joining us for our devotion time this morning. Just have a few announcements for you. Last Sunday, we had a wonderful opportunity to witness seven young men and women confess their faith and answer questions in our 
examination Sunday. And now this Sunday, they will have an opportunity to share the blessings that our God gives us by being confirmed in the faith and in the church and also sharing in the Lord's Supper for the first time. So please join us for that as well as worshiping with us with Bible class and Sunday school starting at 9.15 a.m. as well as we have 8 o'clock and 10.30 church. So please join us for that. Let's now close with the blessing of our God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.